Can you imagine that burial at the sea is a practice of U.S. Navy long, long time ago? Let's watch this. Burial at sea is a means of final disposition of remains that is performed on United States Navy vessels. The committal ceremony is performed while the ship is deployed. Therefore, family members are not allowed to be present. The commanding officer of the ship assigned to perform the ceremony will notify the family of the date, time, and longitude and latitude once the committal service has been completed. The average amount of time, for burial at sea, is 12 to 18 months once the remains or cremains are received at the port of embarkation. A burial flag is required for all committal services performed aboard United States naval vessels, except family members who are not authorized a burial flag. Following the services at sea, the flag that accompanied the cremains or remains will be returned to the person authorized to direct disposition or PADD. If the PADD does not wish to send a burial flag for the service, a flag will be provided by the Navy for the committal service, but will not be sent to the person authorized to direct disposition. Cremated remains or cremains must be in an urn or temporary container, preferably biodegradable, to prevent spillage in shipping. Recent changes in law prohibit the discharge of plastics at sea. Families are encouraged to have the cremains inurned directly or transferred to a sturdy biodegradable urn at their local funeral home to facilitate burial at sea. Burial at sea coordinators at the ports of embarkation are available to field any questions regarding the urns. The cremains, along with the completed burial at sea request package should be forwarded to the burial at sea coordinator at the desired port of embarkation, listed below. Prior to shipment, it is recommended that a phone call be made informing the coordinator of the pending request. Only Priority Mail Express service is authorized when shipping cremains and it is recommended that that tracking and signature on delivery is used to ensure the package is delivered to the correct individual in a timely manner. Intact remains, casket-specific guidelines are required for the preparation of casket remains. All expenses incurred in this process are the responsibility of the PADD, who will select a funeral home in the area of the port of embarkation. After this selection has been made and notification has been provided to the coordinator, the casket remains, the request form, supporting documents, and the burial flag are to be forwarded to the receiving funeral home. The coordinator will make the inspection and complete the checklist for the preparation of casket remains. It is recommended that funeral homes responsible for preparing and shipping intact remains contact the Mortuary Services Office at Navy Casualty in Millington, Tennessee to receive the preparation requirements. Please take note that there are lots of rules on how this is done to protect ocean environments and fishing areas. Specific regulations on the coffin, like how heavy it is, make sure it does not wash ashore. People can hold services out at sea on the boat or on the beach before the boat leaves. Anyone can have a sea burial, so long as they get a license. They are favored by people who have been in the Navy, fisherfolk and sailors but are becoming more popular in general. There are three locations where sea burials are usually held in England. The Needles Spoil Ground this is to the west of the Isle of Wight and three miles south of the Needles. Between Hastings and New Haven. This is near Sussex on the south coast. Off Tynemouth in North Tyneside on the east coast. This is because sea burials have to be where the sea is deep enough, the currents are weak and far away from fishing routes. In the rest of the UK the rules for sea burials are different. In Scotland there are two locations which meet the criteria for sea burials. These are Oban on the west coast and John O'Groats on the northern tip. If you want to bury someone at sea in Scotland you will need to contact their burial, cremation and death certification team.
In Northern Ireland you would need to propose a location and get a license from the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. In Wales you would need to propose a location and get a license from Natural Resources Wales. To bury a body at sea in these locations in England you'll need a self-service marine license. This costs £50 and is faster to get than a regular marine license. When applying for a self-service marine license you'll need A death certificate The registry office will give you this when you register the death A form of notice Also known as Form 104 the registry office can also give you this form if you ask for it, which you then pass on to the coroner. This will give you permission to move the body out of England. A certificate of freedom from fever and infections. This is to avoid any possibility of water-borne infections. You can get this from a GP or hospital doctor. Once the license is granted burials have to happen within three months. To apply for a self-service license use the Marine Management Operations Interactive Assistance Tool. A funeral director will prepare a body in a specific way for burial at sea. Your funeral director should not embalm the body. This stops chemicals damaging the ocean environment. Dress the body in eco-friendly materials that biodegrade. Place a durable identification tag on the body. With details like the person's full name, date of burial and who the funeral director is. People have to build coffins for sea burials in a certain way. The English government has specific requirements, which include The coffin not containing any plastic, lead, copper, or zinc between 40 and 50 drilled holes to make sure the coffin sinks. Iron, steel, or concrete clamped to the base of the coffin. The weight being distributed evenly to make sure the coffin does not turn vertical. Steel bands wrapped around the coffin both length and width ways. If you are considering a burial at sea make sure you go to the government's website and read through the requirements in full. If you want a burial at sea make sure it's written in your will or as part of your funeral plan. Making it widely known amongst your family and friends can also help. As it's such a specific way to be buried it's important that people know it's really what someone wants. Remember that any funeral wish in your will can only be a request and is not legally binding. Having a prepaid funeral plan can help make sure your final wishes happen as you intend them to. In warmer months the process can take as little as a few days, but in colder temperatures, it can take months. The body becomes very pruny and will change color. Over time the body will release gases that cause it to float, which is why the weight of the coffin is so important. The body may form adipocere, a hard gray waxy substance made from fat that is like soap. Eventually the skin will peel away as it absorbs water and underwater animals will begin to eat the body in the same way worms and insects would for a burial on land. This will be faster if the water has lots of oxygen that supports marine life, and slower if it has little or none. Eventually the body will become a part of the ocean and the bones will become part of the sand. The cost of sea burials depends on which sea burial location, service, and company you choose. The cost of the burial itself starts at £2,400 for a boat with the right equipment and licenses, but can go up to £4,500 or more to include the cost of the special coffin and taking people out onto the water. There are a few companies you can choose from who specialize in at sea burial in England who can sort this out for you such as Burial at Sea Family Boat Services or Britannia Shipping for Burial at Sea. Other things like transporting the body from the funeral home to the chosen marina and choice of flowers will also affect the overall cost. Before choosing a sea burial think about the role of the weather and the risks involved. 
On the day of the burial the boat's captain decides if the weather is suitable. If it isn't, you may not be able to go on the boat with the crew and may have to say goodbye to your loved one on the beach before the boat sets off. The captain and crew will then carry out the burial in accordance with your wishes. If the weather is really bad the burial may have to be delayed. Most companies have contracts that mean you are financially responsible for extra fees if something like this happens. These contracts cover any circumstances that are beyond the company's control. So if the burial is delayed you may have to pay extra. It is also worth thinking about the small risk of the body not settling on the seabed and somehow being washed ashore. This risk is low, so long as the specific regulations on the type of coffin and burial location are followed. Some people might not worry about this small possibility, whereas others may find the idea too upsetting to consider. Hope this article helps you. If you find this interesting, please share this, like, comment down below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for you to be updated on our next videos.